Now, the National Coronavirus Command Council has amended the regulations on the custody to move their children between their respective homes during the COVID-19 lockdown period. Previously, children of separated parents were not allowed to move during this period. Now, to discuss these regulations and other related issues surrounding the custody of children, joining me via Skype is Shando Theron, who is a family law expert. A very good afternoon to you, Mr. Theron. Thank you so much for your time and for joining us. Perhaps then just give us a breakdown on what the current COVID-19 lockdown regulations mean for parents, particularly those who are co-parenting during this period. Yes, Matipela, what it basically means is um, it's more difficult to move children around. Um, generally, children were moved around according to a parenting plan or a court order, uh, a parenting plan that was made in order of court. Now, that still remains at the moment, uh, there, but they, they, it could be a little bit more tricky if the children needs to be moved between uh, uh, municipalities. Um, if the child lives in the same district, then the one parent can certainly go fetch the child in terms of the order of court, but they must have that order of court with them. And um, they need an order of court, um, uh, which is generally a decree of divorce that, has been, that includes a parenting plan, or they need a parenting plan that's been approved by the family advocate, um, and otherwise they need a form three from a magistrate. Now, where they absolutely need a Form 3 for, from a magistrate is if they have a child around between uh, different metropolitan areas. So let's take, for instance, where the child has to be moved from Pretoria to Johannesburg or something like that. Then you need to approach a court, get a Form 3 from a magistrate, and then you have to state to the magistrate that the house where the child is being moved to, uh, Matapelo, does not have anybody, well, that the house is COVID-free. And you also need to take along the birth certificate and give reasons why the child needs to be moved. So there's a bit more admin and PT involved there. Now, I want us to talk about, you know, the current alert levels or COVID-19 lockdown levels, which are currently put in place. When we were still under, you know, full on lockdown, there were rising calls from parents, particularly those who are divorced or separated, calling for government to amend these lockdown regulations. We're now looking at level three of the lockdown and most parts of the country will certainly be moving towards that lower stage. Are we expecting more calls from parents asking for more leniency and some of these measures to even be made less stricter? Well, I think what, we, what, I think what people would like is more consistency in the application. What I found in my practice is what happens in one jurisdiction doesn't necessarily happen in another jurisdiction. One court would be quite pedantic what they allow. One police station or roadblock would be quite pedantic in what they allow. And in another area wouldn't be enforced at all. I think what people want is consistency and to know and certainty to, uh, to know what the rules are. The bottom line is just, um, I think, use a common sense approach, take the court order with you when you move the child around, um, have the child obviously sit in the back seat, you in the front seat, wear a mask, um, and, and um, uh, just be able to, if you are stopped at the roadblock, just explain to the person at the roadblock, you know, where you are taking the child and present them with, with the order of court that states you're taking the child from this house to that house and that it's in terms of an order of court. I think what people just want is, is just certainty and a uniformity in the way that the rules are applied. Let's talk a little bit more about the application process and navigating the way for parents who everybody's really living through this pandemic for the first time and nobody has the manual on how to navigate some sort of these areas. But let's talk a little bit more on your view with regards to this entire process. Has it really been easy for parents on their side? Look, um, it hasn't been easy for everybody. Um, I can't really blame government. We're all sort of just making this up as we go along. Um, none of us, at least nobody that I know, has ever dealt or been um, through any situation like this. Uh, so we're sort of making, or government was sort of making it up as they, as, as they went along, looking at what other countries were doing, and then sort of trying to tighten it up, seeing where there's loopholes, where there's problems. But of course, you know, as it filters down, there's obviously inconsistencies that has come in. So I don't blame government with, for what's happened. But unfortunately, what I found is some parents have now used this COVID as an excuse to deny the other parent access and to possibly alienate the child. Um, so that is unfortunate that people have used this time or parents have used this time during a divorce to try and settle scores. 
And at the end of the day, it's just the child that suffers. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is that the yardstick is the best interest of the child, not the convenience of the parents. And I think sometimes in the fray of a divorce, people, people forget that. The yardstick has always been the best interest of the child. It's stated in the Constitution, and that's the constitutional imperative. And at the end of the day, no government regulation, no minister, nobody can override that constitutional imperative of the child's best interest. Mm. And now, Mr. Theron, let's look at, you know, certain cases of parents who were still in the process of applying for divorce and had not necessarily reached that stage during the lockdown period before that. But let's talk about the impact and sort of the help that has been really provided by government for those parents, if any at all, there is. No, unfortunately there all processes have stalled to a large extent. The courts are now currently, um, I must say the courts have, have, have come to the party and instituted an electronic system. So you can now currently issue your divorce summons. But as the rules of court state, a divorce summons has to be served in person on the other party. There are certain matters which has to be personal service. Um, divorce is one of them. And where I have found problems is that some of the sheriffs of the court who are supposed to serve it are not doing their job and are refusing to or are not at work or are saying because of COVID they can't serve. So there's been a couple of more hiccups and more frustrations with, with actually um, not only initiating the process but keeping it going. Mm -hmm. But I think um, the courts have really come to the party and, and, and the courts are trying their best. There is obviously now going to be a backlog um, with cases, but... Um, We'll get there. We'll get there. I actually want, to, uh, want us to speak a little bit more about that, and that was indeed going to be my next question to you with regards to dealing with the backlog since operations had come to necessarily a complete halt over here. How do we then try and sort of speed up this process so that those parents who were during the process of divorcing make it very quick for the betterment of the children? Look, anything that has to do with a child, anything got it that's got to do with a child's best interest, specifically anything that's a life and limb issue, a matter of urgency, those issues are heard by the court at present, but it's got to be urgent. I've, I've, I've taken during this time, I was in court, in children's court yesterday with a matter that, that I would consider urgent, but the court didn't consider it urgent and said, no, come back on another day when, when things are more normal. And, and when um, we're not under some sort of COVID lockdown. So it's, it's for the, for the where, where previously you just had to deal with the merits of the issue, you now have to cover the, hurt, the hurdle of urgency before the court will listen to the merits. But when it concerns children or where there's a risk to a child of abuse or neglect or a life and limb issue, then the court will certainly hear that matter.